Today we are talking about YouTube's removal of dislikes, or I guess you should say public dislikes, which is essentially the same thing as just removing dislikes. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Swallow Entertainment, and today we are talking about dislikes. I already said that, I know. There's not a whole lot of like quirky, fun intros for me to do, just talking about dislikes. I'm making this video mainly because people in real life have been asking me about this since they know I'm a full-time YouTuber. I've been asked this by people in the industry, people outside of the industry, and then also people on Twitter and things like that asking me to talk about this. So I figured, hey, let's talk about my feelings of the removal of public dislikes here on YouTube and some of the theories that have been coming out as far as why. I should probably start by saying that I am very fortunate here on YouTube. You guys seem to like me. For the most part, people don't hit dislike when they're on my videos. Um, I use vidIQ mainly because I like their checklist function when it comes to uploads. It helps me for not forget, I guess, when I'm doing uploads and things like that and forget the little things that I need to be doing. But I also like it because they show me not only the public dislike to like ratio here on my channel, but also publicly for other channels. I have no idea how that's gonna be affected once this change comes through, because I don't know how their um, algorithm or API works or whatever the fuck the technology term is uh, for vidIQ, but for me, mostly my like to dislike ratio is mostly like 98% positive, which is nice. I think per video, it'll tell me like where my video ranks up compared to others. Let's see. Yeah, so for my recent uploads, uh, my most recent one for this video I'm looking at, it says 98.4% uh, and then my channel average is 99.1% positive like to dislike ratio. So I am very fortunate here on YouTube. So I'm not really sure if for my own channel, what this says about the potential removal of public dislikes here on my channel. I think if anything for myself, I think this is gonna lead to, okay, let me backtrack. There's been a lot of theories thrown around of why they're getting rid of public dislikes here on YouTube. I think the company line that YouTube itself is saying is that it's for the mental health of creators to prevent dislike bombing and things like that. Obviously that led to more speculation that this is all tied to, I think the 2019 YouTube Rewind, which became the most disliked video on the platform. And that this was just how long it took for them to roll this out. Though someone's gonna be like, that's a really long time to roll that out. Even without a pandemic, YouTube as a platform takes a long time to roll things out for the most part for the vast majority of people. Um, they do a little beta testing here and there, but things do take a long time for them. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that this is all tied back to the YouTube Rewind. I don't think that's the only real reason, but when you factor in the fact that there was a global pandemic and even YouTube themselves were having a lot of issues with people out of office and things like that, it's not out of the realm of possibility that this is just how long it took them to roll it out in response to YouTube Rewind. The other theory that's been thrown around is that this is because of certain large creators that have been publicly canceled, done X, Y, and Z, or had just started seeing a very drastic change in likes to dislikes and that this is their way of appeasing those creators because those creators went to YouTube and were like, hey, let's not do this, let's fix this, because uh, how am I supposed to make you money if people don't like my videos because they're bombed with dislikes and that there's some type of mass dislike bombing and things like that. See, I don't know. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that that is the main reason or even really a plausible reason. Do I think that people go to YouTube and complain? Absolutely. I do think there are certain large creators that do get special treatment or have more of a direct line to higher ups at YouTube than the vast majority of us or even those of us who have partner managers. At this time, I think I just received my notification that I've been matched with someone for a partner manager and I hit 100K last year sometime. So, and even then usually partner managers are like low man on the totem pole. Those of us with partner managers, I haven't even spoken to mine yet, but those people with partner managers, usually they can't do a whole lot other than looking at the potential reason as to why a video was taken down or demonetized or X, Y, and Z, that type of thing. I do think there are people who have a more direct line to higher ups at YouTube. I don't know if they necessarily have enough pull within the community itself um, to, cause this type of change. We've seen responses from YouTube in the past, like demonetizing creators temporarily and things like that based on things that happen outside of YouTube. But I don't know if those creators would have enough pull or even enough of a hold on the whole of YouTube or the whole of the image of YouTube for YouTube and Google to respond in the way of taking rid of dislikes just because they were like, I don't like it. The other option is that this is again, to protect the mental health of creators, again, Personally, I don't think dislikes do it more. I think negative comments are way worse. See, I don't know, okay? Because at the end of the day, 
we as the general public don't have any real way of knowing which creators are going to YouTube and saying like, I don't like how my video is being responded to. Why are you promoting my videos to people who hate it? Why are you doing X, Y, and Z? I think YouTube has a very big issue right now with their recommendations here on YouTube. I think that's steadily gotten worse, especially over the last year and a half of me being a full-time creator that I've seen this change where the recommendations here on YouTube are sometimes horrible and they're only recommending new videos that I've already seen or people that I'm already subscribed to, but then they're not giving me notifications when people put out a video for I'm, I'm subscribed to. I do think there's an issue with like recommendations here on YouTube and who they are recommending videos of and to. That can lead to a dislike to like ratio. That's a problem. But again, like I said, we don't really have any way of knowing who is going to YouTube and who is not and whether or not they are saying what they are saying. I should say not whether or not what they are saying. We have no way of really knowing. So for all we know, YouTube is having creators be like, my mental health is being drastically hurt because of the dislike ratio here on YouTube. And someone's going to be like, okay, well, screw them. They're a public figure. I understand that a hundred percent. But again, we have to look at this. Well, we don't have to look at it. I'm choosing to look at it from the YouTube perspective of things where they're choosing to make a choice now that's probably not popular in the hopes of preventing something horrific happening or someone doing something horrific to themselves after they've already gone to YouTube and made complaints or have cited that they, the mass disliking or the mass bullying or whatever they choose to put the word on it and have them hurt themselves, God forbid. We have no way of knowing that. So it's potentially from a business perspective, if you wanna look at it that coldly, that could be why they're just trying to take the unpopular opinion now to prevent future liability in the future, that type of thing. Future liability in the future, I swear to God. I can't talk, love this for me. I'm not gonna be like, oh, the mental health is not like a legitimate option because again, we really don't know who is going to YouTube and who is saying what or what they're seeing on their end as far as complaints go and things like that. Personally, for myself, I think that having non-public dislikes in the YouTube comment section. For those of you who don't know, when you leave a comment and there's like a like button and then a dislike button, I don't see those dislikes. Here on YouTube, I can see pretty much everything for the most part, but the dislike button here on the comment section, I don't see. That's not just not public to the public, it's not public to me either. I don't see the like to dislike ratio for comments. Personally, I think having public dislikes on comments would actually do more for the mental health of creators than anything else. And I know someone's gonna be like, oh, well that's gonna encourage dogpiling and things like that. I understand that. Part of me understands why there are not public dislikes on YouTube comment sections, but also for myself, even with my positive like to dislike ratio, I am very careful with how many comments I let myself read at a time. Because if I just keep scrolling, I will inevitably find someone who either has, I, I personally think that I'm gonna butcher this. I, and I don't know what the cause of this is. I think media literacy and just comprehension in general for media has drastically decreased in the last couple of years. I don't know how we fix that. I don't know if that's a TikTok related slash Vine related thing where like our uh, comprehension and our attention to what people are saying or um, what captions are saying or whatever, or like the context of a video. But my point is, is that inevitably when I'm spending all my time going through the comment sections, inevitably I will find someone who just blatantly misunderstood what I was saying or uh, chose to focus on one thing and now they're mad at me and they're simping for a building and somehow I don't understand architecture and la 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 la, all of that. So I usually am careful about the amount of comments that I let myself read at any given time. And I, I'm assuming that I'm not the only one in that regard for a content creator. At the end of the day, I understand I am putting myself on the internet. You have every right to say whatever you want in response to me but I also don't have to read it. <laughs> if I think that I don't, can't handle it, that's the reality of it. I don't have to read it if I can't handle it. I read a lot of comments, I respond to a lot of comments here and there, but I don't read them all at a certain amount of time. I really like the YouTube uh, Creator Studio, how it'll show you like the three most recent comments. I like that, I go through that a lot. Then I can reply to not only recent videos, but also it gives me that for old videos as well, if someone comments on an older video. I like that a lot, it keeps me from just essentially trying to doom scroll because it's not really doom scroll because again most of the comments are positive but it prevents me from trying to search for the negative ones and then overreacting to those um but that being said i do think that for the vast majority of creators even when there's only one comment when you see a public like next to it see i think it would be beneficial for creators to know if that like is the majority or not i do think that would be beneficial for creators to know how popular of an opinion that person is. Cause it's not even just like, oh, we're dogpiling or whatever. 
it's like, okay, is this person saying what a lot of people are thinking and they just didn't know how to articulate it? Or is this someone just being a dick, you know, or someone who's, you know, focusing on something that wasn't a focus or saying something that wasn't a focus, you know, like I see a lot of corrections here and there. Like if I make a mistake in a video and I see someone correcting that, I think it would be beneficial for me to know if this is an actual correction. And usually I go and do my little more research on my end and see if there's anything else I can find. Personally, I think that public dislikes on the comment section in conjunction with likes is probably gonna do more beneficial things for the mental health of content creators than the removal of public dislikes on YouTube videos. And even then, getting rid of dislikes publicly, I'm still gonna see them, you know? If anything, I think this might encourage more dislikes. And so I know someone's gonna be like, well, that's counterintuitive, because there's definitely times where I go through my comment section and I see people who are like, uh, did you like bomb or something? And it's like, no, like I'll hit the dislike button myself. I don't give a shit. There are definitely people who just hit the dislike because they think it's skinny and they want to make it just one more bigger. But I'm wondering if that's going to be larger because there's no public dislikes. And so I'm wondering if this is going to be more detrimental to the mental health. If we're just specifically talking about dislikes, getting rid of public dislikes, but you're not getting rid of the dislike view for me. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's counterintuitive. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. Which brings us to the other option, um, which is the most common one that I have seen, which is that this is trying to move things closer to YouTube just being a advertiser's mecca. There's no bad views, there's only views. And so for advertisers, that looks like a good thing. It's like, oh, well, why is my ad being put on this video that's got 94% dislikes? Why is my ad being put on that video when clearly people don't like it? And then there's the backlash of that. And again, I am not in the minds of advertisers. I don't know what they're doing. I just benefit from them being put on my video here and there. Those of you who don't know, I have no control over the ads of what you see specifically. I can place mid rolls here and there. Um, sometimes YouTube tries to place them for me. And trust me, if you think I have a lot of ads on my videos now, as it is, you should see what YouTube tries to stick on my videos when I just let them do it themselves. It's actually insane, especially since they started doing it so that you could put mid rolls on eight minutes videos versus 10 minute videos. They just go through and just try to stick them all in there. Cause again, I make a percentage, but YouTube takes a cut as well. So for the advertiser side of things from a business perspective, again, Again, we have to always look at YouTube as a business and not just a user platform because they like money. I don't think it's necessarily for the creator's best interest, even though I as a creator would be benefiting from the ad revenue change or anything like that. I think it's mostly a YouTube thing. I think they want more advertisers or they want more positive response from advertisers when it comes to advertising here on YouTube. And again, there's only good views if there's no bad views. If there's dislikes aren't public, then the look of content here on YouTube is that all views are good views. And uh, it doesn't matter that this video has only a thousand likes, it's got 2 million views, you know, and that's all they're really gonna see. Now that in response is where um, this comment came from the creator of YouTube. So this popped up on my feed from the uh, Twitter account Dexerto, I'm pronouncing that wrong. YouTube co-founder Jod Karim shared his distaste of YouTube's removal of the dislike button on the very first YouTube video comment. Oh, his video comment. Anyway, again, we're getting rid of the public dislike, how that looks, and it's not getting rid of the dislike button in general, but I guess getting rid of public dislikes is kind of the same point as getting rid of dislikes in general. But anyway, here's his comment. And this was put on the very first video on YouTube, which was put out me at the zoo, uh, the 24th of April, 2005. He, it looks like he changed the uh, description of the video. Watching Matt Koval's announcement about the removal of dislikes, I thought something was off. The spoken words did not match the eyes. The video reminded me of an interview Admiral Jeremiah Denton gave in 1966. I have never seen a less enthusiastic, more reluctant announcement of something that is supposed to be great. Calling the removal of dislikes, a good thing for creators cannot be done without conflict by someone holding the title of YouTube's creator liaison. We know this because there exists not a single YouTube creator who thinks removing dislikes is a good idea for YouTube or for the creators. Why would YouTube make this universally dislike change? There is a reason, but it's not a good one and not one that will be publicly disclosed. Instead, there will be references to various studies, studies that apparently contradict the common sense of every YouTuber. The ability to easily and quickly identify bad content is an essential feature of a user-generated content platform. Platform. Why? Because not all user generated content is good. It can be. In fact, most of it is not good and that's okay. The idea was never that all content is good. The idea was, however, that among the flood of content, there are great creations 
waiting to be exposed. And for that to happen, the stuff that's not great has to fall by the side as quickly as possible. The process works and there's a name for it, the wisdom of the crowds. The process breaks when the platform interferes with it. Then the platform invariably declines. Does YouTube want to become a place where everything is mediocre because nothing can be great if nothing is bad? In business, there's only one thing more important than make it better. And that's don't fuck it up. I don't think that for creators like myself, Again, like to dislike ratio is very good for me. This is not going to negatively affect me, I don't think. If anything, I think that, oh, well, you know, I, I take that back actually, because I do think that if people can't hit the dislike button and get that out of their system, they're more likely to leave mean comments. Because if you look at TikTok, okay, and I know I'm making a comparison between short form and long form content and all of that, and YouTube is trying to do shorts and all of that, but, I do think that it's this could potentially lead to a rise in more negative, more aggressive comments here on YouTube, despite YouTube's best efforts to like filter things out. Because over on TikTok, you may see this if you are familiar with TikTok. The comment sections are sometimes very tame. Other times they're very lovey-dovey. I love you. Your hair is cool. You are a god and that's terrifying, frankly. And then you have little cults forming over on TikTok or you have comment sections that are quite literally walk in front of a bus and they get very aggressive very quickly. And it's just like grows and grows and grows. And personally, I think that might be because there's no public dislikes. I think there's that. There's shares and things like that. Um, there's comments. And then there's also the, the not interested button where if you hold down a, your thumb on TikTok, it'll give you an option to say whether or not you're interested in that and you can hit not interested. And then you'll start seeing less of those and filter your screen more to yourself. But I don't know. I think if anything, this getting rid of public dislikes is getting rid of that last little like, okay, hey, fuck you dislike. And this may lead to a rise in more angry, aggressive comments. I don't know. It could be that. I think Sarah Dietschy is the uh, one whose uh, view or what she shared uh, about a week ago now, by the time the video comes out, it'll be a while. But on her tweet about this, where she said that she uses dislikes to likes mainly to see if a how-to or a walkthrough or some type of video like that, a demonstration, is worth her time. And that's how she knows whether or not it's a good video that she should be looking at and if it's even gonna be helpful. And I think that that is probably the most user focused view of it where it, this is more gonna do less to protect creators and more so harm to users of the platform. You know, you can't have user generated content without users like, sure, you have people like me who make content for the platform, but if people aren't watching the content, then it's useless. And so I think that likes to dislikes, I think if anything, it's gonna be hurting the user experience more than it's gonna be hurting the creator experience more than anything. For that example, you know, like to dislike ratio as far as like the short how to's. Yeah, just for that. I mean, sure, I don't know. Is dislike bombing that prevalent? Is it that prevalent that they can even try and cite that as an issue? I accept that when I make a video, not all of you are going to like it. I accept that. But I can't imagine that there is enough of a dislike bombing issue that they're, they're able to likely cite that as a, a probable reason for why they're doing this. The math isn't mathing for me, you know? That's, that's that's really my view on it. Personally, for myself, do I think this is gonna be detrimental to me or beneficial to me for my mental health getting rid of public dislikes? No, because personally, I will still be able to see dislikes on my channel. So I think that having that as an option out the window. I think more than anything, it's not the creators that are gonna be mostly affected by the dislikes being removed. I think it's gonna be the user experience here on YouTube. And I don't like that because at the end of the day, you can't be a YouTuber if no one's watching your stuff and if the content itself is declining and you have no way of knowing that it's declining, how do you know to fix it if there is an issue? I mean, I guess we're really gonna see the long-term effects of this in the next couple of months. I have been doing more updates about like what my ad revenue is doing for you guys over on Twitter, if you would like to go check me out over there. And I'm gonna try and keep up with that and see how maybe getting rid of public dislikes, we're gonna see a drastic change in what RPMs and CPMs are doing. And yeah, I guess for myself, this isn't a super negative change, but that doesn't change the fact that I don't think it's a good decision on YouTube's part as a business or for the user experience. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cut it here. I know I'm rambling, so yeah. He's getting so big, guys. Look how big he's getting. My mini schnauzer's huge. Anyway, that's really gonna be it. Uh, don't forget I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast. New episodes every Wednesday. I have merch. Go ahead and check that out down below. What do you think about dislikes and the removal of dislikes? Do you, as a YouTuber or as a user here on YouTube, what do you think this is mainly going to affect? Maybe you have different reasons than me, or maybe you think that there is a different, more obvious reason that I cited for YouTube's decision to do this. Let me know. 
comment down below, share your experience um, and we can discuss it. What are you doing? Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also support me on Patreon, that'll be down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Wait, goodbye. He's eating my hand. What do you think about the removal of dislikes, Hermes? What do you think? He's just like, as long as you can still afford to get me the nice treats, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, Brayden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Dawn, Elliot, Evan, Beckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Jucker, Ray, Joe, John, M, George, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Lisa, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Mim, Lord, Red, Michael, Micah, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Prolic, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, William, Zendry.